think we can all agree with Nate that we're very excited to be here this morning. Hello everyone, how are you doing today? You having a good time? Fantastic. Well, for those of you I haven't met quite yet, allow me to introduce myself. I am Martin, I am the cruise director here on Edge. It's a with great privilege standing up here on stage uh, for what we'd like to call a, a, celebrity, a conversation with Celebrity Better. Now, first and foremost, uh, let me ask you by a round of applause, uh, who of you has not been to Eden quite yet? Few people, few people. Okay, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Did you enjoy the little uh, surprise performance we had from our uh, Edenist, better known as Luna? Yeah, you enjoyed that? Very good. For those of you who did not manage to go there quite yet, don't worry about it. Uh, Luna just casted a magical spell on you hypnotize you as you may that you will be passing by Eden tonight okay so uh, make sure to check it out it's absolutely incredible now uh, well thank you so much for being here for what's a very unique opportunity for you to actually have a conversation not with me no in fact I'm very happy to bring our uh, leadership team up here on stage uh, to have what we like to call a, a conversation with celebrities so first and foremost I'm uh, going to introduce you to our fearless leader a very inspiring lady uh, she's in fact uh, nobody less than our president and CEO of Celebrity Cruises, Ms. Lisa Luta Furlo. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you for joining us this morning. Always dressed to impress as well. You can watch Lisa at 4 a.m. in the morning. She will be dressed to impress, trust me. All right, next up, a gentleman who's actually the glue of the entire hotel operation. Also a very inspiring man, certainly a man I look up to. He's nobody less than our Senior Vice President of Hotel Operations, Mr. Brian Abel. Good morning, Brian. Thank you for joining us. Always smiling, Brian. Always smiling. Up next is a lady that, uh, in fact, I have to tell you, she never fails to put a smile on anybody's face. Every single interaction you have with this lady, uh, you, you, will, you will leave energized. She's also one of the most energetic people I've ever met in my life. She's nobody less than our Senior Vice President of Sales, Ms. Donna Ritzenhauer. to marine operations. Let me tell you, this man has worked so hard to achieve what we like to call the celebrity edge. He's nobody less than our Senior Vice President of Global Marine Operations, Mr. No. Uh, no. no. Yes. We're going to substitute. We're going to substitute. Very good. Very nice. Our cap, very nice. Our, so, remind me your ignorance. Excuse me for my ignorance. What is your current title? <laughs> Associate Vice President, Associate Vice President. Marine Operations. Yeah, I do. Very good. So uh, let me redo that, Captain. I do apologize. I do apologize. Let me redo that. Captain Manolis, Associate Vice President of Marine Operations, everyone. Thank you very much, Captain, for being here. And up next, uh, we have a gentleman, uh, he's our Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer. He's also uh, the gentleman that always competes when it comes to dressing against me. That is Peter Georgi, everyone. Thank you very much, Peter. Right now, of course, uh, we have uh, microphones all around the venue. If you have any questions, uh, please raise the attention of any of our uh, microphone staff, our runners. We like to call them walking around. Any question you may have, get their attention, uh, and we will be gladly to accommodate. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Martin. Welcome, everyone. Good morning. How many went on the custom launches this morning? This morning? Um, thank you for that huge round of applause, which means so many of you did. I'm really, really glad you experienced those because we, um, Captain Costas, um, Chief Engineer Stavros, the entire Marine team, uh, ensured that during these short two-night pre-inaugurals you would get to experience something that you otherwise would not have been able to experience on the ship. So we stopped her, we lowered our magic carpet, um, <laughs> one, that destination gateway. Who had a Bloody Mary already? Yeah, there we go. Good, good, good. Mimosa. There you go. Champagne. All right, good. This is going to be a good session. Um, 
And uh, before I go on, I would also like to recognize a few other people in the room because it's not just this team of five that's here today. We have great representation from all over our celebrity and shared services leadership group. We have Roberta Jacoby, who man manages all of the shore excursions in our entire company. Welcome, Roberta. We have Jennifer Love, our Senior Vice President, uh, President of Safety, Health, and Environment. We have Joe Jamaska, our Managing Director of the UK. Our Managing Director of Australia, New Zealand, here we go. We have Cornelius Gallagher, the genius behind all of the restaurants and menus and all things culinary. We have Tim Kaluta, who's uh, working with us on all things technology and Excalibur. All right, we have Simon Weir, our Associate Vice President of Hotel. Lorenzo, who manages all of our service that uh, this amazing service, and Michael McCarthy, uh, who's in charge of all those beautiful shops, that amazing spa. Um, have you seen it? It's yeah. beautiful. Have you tried it? Yeah. All right, good. Um, and also uh, the casino. Have you been there? Thank you. I, I want everyone, if you have a choice between the casino and Eden, pick the casino. <laughs> And we have a lot of other uh, sales leadership. Where's Keith Lane, Vice President of Sales? All right, there we go. I you know, it's always hard to you forget. Um, and then I would also like to do, um, make a special call out to uh, two special women that are sitting here in the front row. Both of them are members of our board of directors. Ms. Ann Moore, please stand up here. And, Mar and Ms. Maritza Montiel. just joining us for a little R&R &R on, our, on our lovely ship. So um, thank you all for coming. We really, really appreciate the time you've taken to spend with us. I see some people in the back of the room. We do have some seats. Don't feel um, weird walking in because we've already started. Please fill in the seats. We have plenty of them um, and we would like you to be comfortable while you're here. And um, I think without further ado, let's uh, open up the floor. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Actually, I have <clears throat> two questions. Number one, I'm wondering how these are more environmentally friendly than water bottles. And my second question is, the show that was in here last night, is that indicative of the shows um, on a seven-night cruise, or are there other um, types of entertainment in the theater? Um, I, so we will have five production shows on our seven-night cruises, five. Uh, that is the first time ever. That's one of uh, one of five. Uh, tonight you'll see hype, which will be very different, uh, which is wonderful. The the musicians, the performer, the uh, dancers, the choreography is wonderful. Hope you can buy, uh, buy and see that. Uh, Brian, we have one inspired by Shakespeare, and that is Midsummer Night's Dream, Hot Summer Night's Dream. Okay, <laughs> mid hot. Um, <laughs> The Purpose uh, by none other than our amazing Ashley and, um, and the Kaleidoscope. So those will be the five. This is the one that we've had ready for the pre-inaugurals, uh, but again, we will have a series of five and they're all different and they will appeal to all different people. Um, and so I'm sure that uh, people will find one that they truly enjoy. We also, uh, in terms of the bottles, so um, aluminum is the only 100% recyclable um, item that uh, that we are that we have in our world and, our, and in our environment. And one of the things that we have done, we are getting ready. I don't know if it's this week or next week. We're getting ready to publish our environmental press release about everything, um, all things Edge. And there are many of them, from the technologies for fuel efficiency. For example, this ship is 20% more fuel efficient than Solstice, which was our last first in series, which is always wonderful as you design and build new classes of ships, the technologies improve. You might notice the parabolic ultrabow, which is designed to cut through the water in a much easier way with, um, with less friction. So again, we reduce uh, fuel. We also have bubbles underneath the ship 
if the ship is floating on bubbles, again, reducing the friction and reduce, uh, reducing our fuel consumption. And there, are, I think are, there might be 40 things specific to EDGE that are not on any of the other ships in our fleet. What we also uh, took the opportunity to do as we introduced this new ship, and Brian and his team deserve all the credit for that, but I also have to give a shout out to my niece, who was an intern over the summer. Um, she uh, cares about the oceans, she uh, cares about the environment, she's uh, studying to be an engineer and uh, going into alternative fuels for a living. And when she came to intern, I asked her, please do Auntie a favor and try to find a solution where we could introduce EDGE without having plastic water bottles on board. And I think it's important to note that nothing leaves our ship. So whether we had plastic uh, water bottles on board or not, would not affect the environment. Everything, we are zero landfill, everything on board is incinerated or recycled, but we just wanted to make a statement that we would do our part in, um, in moving away from plastic water bottles. So you either have the aluminum um, that you uh, are carrying with you, or Evian, which would be in uh, glass water bottles. Um, and uh, that's the purpose behind those. The interesting story is that that company is called Open Water, it is a company that was started by two young women, University of Miami graduates, who, uh, yeah. They left Miami in 2008 and moved to Chicago. Anyone here from Chicago? Uh, they started their company because they knew at some point in time people would be uh, hopefully moving away from plastic water bottles. And this, uh, my niece found them and they came down and they are so delightful and wonderful. Um, and they are, their business is really growing and we're hoping that, uh, that we help them be a little more successful. And interestingly, we tested these uh, bottles on Equinox before we brought them on Edge. And uh, one of the women who owns the company uh, emailed me and said one of the guests called them. Uh, who also owns the company and started buying their water bottles. So we very hope we uh, go a little way to helping those women be very successful. Um, and, and while I'm on that note, I will just tell you, please notice in your rooms there are no single-use plastic amenities. Everything um, is refillable and reusable. We have no um, plastic uh, condiments. Uh, everything is in glass or ramekins. We also have no plastic uh, yogurt. Um, containers, everything again is in glass. So 90% uh, of our guest facing um, items uh, that were single use plastic are eliminated. Thank you. Thank you, Brian and your team and, that, and the supply chain group and the environment group uh, for all of your help in that regard. And we are the first ship ever uh, to be introduced uh, with that as our guiding principle. So we have a question to your right in the front. Hello. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. <clears throat> Any good adventure starts with a really positive first experience, and your cruise terminal at Port Everglades yeah. is stunning. Oh, Can you talk yeah. a little bit about what that experience was like and, and how your company partnered um, to build that at Port Everglades? Thank you. Um, that terminal is really beautiful, and we are so excited because, again, another first, it is the first purpose-built uh, terminal for celebrity cruises. And uh, yes, and so uh, we have deserved one for a long time. This ship was the catalyst uh, for us being able to achieve that. Port Everglades, Broward County, the business community, uh, the government community, Port Everglades really wanted the ship in Port Everglades and worked really hard uh, to ensure that we, um, that we birthed her there and turned there. Um, and the architects were wonderful. Uh, not only was the project unanimously approved by the Broward County government, but it was also supported by the local business community. And we were, um, we were very fortunate to have architects and designers who worked with us. We sent them all of the visuals for Celebrity Edge and said, please um, use this as your inspiration to design the terminal. And I think as you walked through that terminal, you can see that they all did that to a really high degree and gave us a lot of input. So we're very, very grateful to them. And then of course, Moss Construction built the terminal uh, in time and were such great partners to get that terminal ready. And then partnering with our own operational team and our global uh, tour operator group and also the technology team, the Excalibur team, we have worked really hard to ensure that the 
embarkation and debarkation process is unbelievably smooth. We um, will have re facial recognition as you leave. I'm going to let Dondra talk about the app in a second because it's a big part of the terminal. Um, I also want to give a shout out to the Broward Cultural Council um, and my friend Bonnie that I see here in the front row because they were so wonderful working with us to ensure that we had beautiful artwork in that terminal. So you'll see a beautiful installation. We have another structure going out front. We have some murals coming in as well. So Broward County supported us in that way because I think you'll all notice we have a lovely art collection on the ship and we yes, wanted to ensure that the terminal was the same. And then the only other thing, we, and you saw the suite area, I'm sure many of you, the retreat lounge for our suite guests, but what you probably didn't see, which was one of the things that was really, really important to all of us um, on this stage, was that our crew experience in our terminal be as wonderful as our guest experience. We are the first brand that has ever built um, a, thank you. Don't they deserve it? Aren't they yes, fabulous? They do. There's a beautiful crew area, air conditioned, Wi-Fi, plugs, comfortable, um, while they're waiting to either go on or off the ship. And I also then uh, just reminded me, I need to do a shout out to the crew areas on those ships, uh, on this ship. Those are also places that you will not see while you're with us, unfortunately, but know that we brought in 11 crew members while we were designing the ship, and we asked them, what's important to you, and how would you like to see your um, areas that you need to We worked with our design team, and one of the things that they said was, the guest areas are so beautiful and modern luxury, we would uh, like our uh, areas to look the same. So they absolutely do. If you walk through their dining room, their specialty dining room, their coffee shop, their crew area outside, their pub, their gym is beautiful. Uh, everything is, is designed in a very modern luxury way. So I want to thank the design and new build team for helping us do that as well. So that's it. So thank you all for the question. Lisa, we have a question up here to your left in the top. Okay, left into the top. Hello, um, I'm Deborah Kerper from Cruise Planners. Okay. Wow, we understood. We didn't notice you were in the room. Tell your part from anyone else. We are here. Yes, you are. In force. Thank yeah. You. First of all, you know, it goes without saying, the ship is absolutely magnificent. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, Celebrity and its sister company are known as being first and foremost in terms of accessible cruising. We love you for that. I'm also, both of us, Roberta and I, we are proud members of your Disability Advisory Board. and work with, you know, Ron Pettit. Um, so I am disabled, and I have a beautiful, accessible stateroom. Imagine my shock when I went in the bathroom, and the shower seat, which is attached to the wall, which is great, is like a 12-inch square. I'm sorry, but that barely accommodates like one cheek. And, <laughs> and you know, when, when, somebody, um, when somebody is paralyzed, or myself, I happen to be a double amputee, so I have no feet to put on the ground. It's very scary to have such a small surface to try to balance on. Now, I do commend my room steward, who found me a large transfer bench, which works great. But I don't know if you have enough of those for all of your accessible cabins. So, um, I was a little disappointed, unfortunately, to see this on a brand new ship because I know you have a better situation on many ships, as does, like I said, your sister company. Um, I was hoping that there are guidelines that you take from ship to ship, you know, in new builds. If something works, you know, don't fix I mean, if something's not broken, don't fix it. Don't fix it. That's the, wait, what's that saying? <laughs> you got it. You know, you got know it. What I, yeah. We know what you mean. Okay. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. Um, and, and then just to skip to another thing, I was so impressed with the uh, magic carpet and I went on the tender this morning and it was really kind of fun because um, you know I went down there early and I said is this accessible and they said yes give us a few minutes and 
You know, they hadn't used that system yet, but I was more than happy to be a guinea pig. <laughs> and we did, we did the stair lift, and they brought out a beautiful ramp. Um, unfortunately, it was rocking too much, and the ramp kept flying up in the air. So I said, well, with help, I can walk on. And they helped me, and uh, I did. I wanted to try the ramp, you know, so for my clients, I could see how that was. But I did see that it would work. But I said to one of the officers, I said, so tell me, this is all wonderful. What's going to happen when we get to the other side? <laughs> they said they were still working on that. But, you know, <laughs> I appreciate your efforts. I really do. But I'm a little, I'm just a little concerned about those shower seats. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll get your stateroom number. We'll take a look at it. We'll go look at the other rooms and make sure that we can fit two cheeks for the future. <laughs> Yes, any just right here? Oh, where? Okay. Got a microphone? Nope. Hello there. The Magic Harvest is awesome, but I'd like to know more about it. I haven't had anybody give me a full rundown. I'm kind of concerned when the magic carpet goes up and down. I know there's not going to be any people on it, which is great, but it does go in front of cabins. Um, when it stops, is it blocking anybody? I know it looks like from our view when we were out on the tenders, it looks like that area juts out a little bit, I think, from the other sh part of the ship. Um, I just want some more understanding about sure. how that works up and down um, and, and yeah. what it blocks and so it's, um, and it's stationed on a few different <laughs> decks. The first one is the one that we tender from this morning, which is on deck two. Um, we also have it positioned on deck five as an extension of RAR on 5, which um, our guests are uh, welcome to visit and uh, participate in that as a specialty restaurant off deck, uh, on Deck 5. Um, the day parts are listed in the Celebrity Today, and if you go in the elevator, you will always see a button that gets you, that tells you where the magic carpet is at any given time. It would then be up on Deck 14 sometimes as an extension of the resort deck, or Deck 16 as an extension of the resort deck. It's a bar, lounge, great entertainment, and sometimes uh, we will even serve dinner and brunch on the edge when it's all the way up on deck 16, and Brian and Cornelius have created some lovely experiences. Um, it does go up and down. There are never people on it. When it does, it moves very quickly. Um, it does not block any staterooms ever in any position that it um, it is uh, positioned at for any period of time. I've uh, run into a few people who like really enjoy seeing it go up and down because they see how it works, um, and it never it never blocks them for more than just a, a few seconds as it goes by. Uh, it was designed and developed only to ensure that, like everything else we did on this ship, we created a modern luxury experience for everything that our guests uh, were going to experience when they were on this ship, including when we had to tender in the very few instances that we have to do that, and it is less than 20% of the time. Of course, with the magic carpet and those custom launches, people are asking us to tender more often because it's such a, a luxurious experience. Um, and uh, I'm not sure that that will drive our tender versus dock decisions, but when we do have to tender, it certainly is a wonderful experience for our guests. Uh, because it can't stay positioned on deck one or deck two as a, as a platform for the custom launches, we had to move it into a safe position, and since we had to move it up to put it in a safe position, we thought it would be really lovely to have it stop along the way and design it in a beautiful way. Kelly Hoppen designed the interior of the Magic Carpet. Tom Wright was the architect between, uh, behind the genius of the Magic Carpet, and so our guests are able to uh, enjoy it for many different day parts and many different experiences. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to ask. Go ahead. I was go going ahead. to say that. You heard me. Yes, uh, it is very quiet when it's going up and down. Nobody woke up this morning when it was going down, right? No. Because it's in front of my of my stateroom, and I didn't hear anything while it was going down. It's very, very quiet and smooth, and very safe. Nobody can reach out as this is moving up and down from the stateroom. Lisa, hi. Yep. Do you wait? We need a we need a court behind you right here, right here, right there to your right. 
Thank you. There you go. Hi, Stacy. Acre Brentwood Travel in St. Louis, Missouri. I just wanted to know more about the dining on the magic carpet. We have a client who would love a reservation ahead of time, which we were told could not be done. But can you just explain how that works, the dining aspect on the magic carpet? Sure. Um, so, like Lisa said, it depends where the magic carpet is. So when it's on deck five, it's an extension of Veron five, and it's uh, you have cocktails. We have a, uh, a menu there that's a, a version of the menu that we have on Veron five today that we serve out there. Um, it is uh, more of like a first come first serve for for that experience. When it goes up to deck sixteen and we have dinner on the edge or we have brunch on the edge, we will take reservations starting on day one of that cruise. So Lisa, we have a question up on deck five, up on your left hand side. Okay, I see you, thank you. Hi, I'm David from Cruise Planners. <laughs> and you know, I just had to say that. All <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> Lisa, you mentioned that um, we have zero landfill and, and uh, what uh, waste uh, you can't recycle you incinerate. Does some of that um, incineration help with the propulsion of the ship? Oh, no. <laughs> no. Richard always says he wishes he could harness the energy of the performers and have that fuel uh, the, the ship uh, instead of the uh, fuel that we have to buy, but no, it does not. Okay. And the second question was, uh, for hundreds of years, most uh, cargo vessels, cruise ships, have always had the, uh, the bow extending to a point, and you've mentioned the new technology. Um, this is quite revolutionary. How has, how, who was it that came up with this uh, idea to not have uh, the, the bow like you know, companies have been doing for maybe a century or so? Um, uh, yeah, and I think there have been, I don't know that we're the first, but I know that we're the most recent. And that was, again, done in conjunction with Harry Kulavara, our executive vi vice president of New Build, who is also a naval engineer and a naval architect, and Tom Wright. Uh, and Tom Wright did a lot of the architecture of this ship. Um, you saw him in the opening video. Uh, and the combination of what we were trying to think about for fuel efficiency and how we would design the ship. And um, another thing that we really tried to do with Celebrity Edge is it was one of our ambitions that no matter where the ship was in the world, everyone would know it was Celebrity Edge. And um, the bow that we chose and the design of the bow was just one of those things. Even how we have... Um, I don't know if you all noticed if you were out on the resort deck or the rooftop garden, if you look at the funnel and you look at what we have done with the funnel and that beautiful curved X and it's all outlined with LED uh, lighting and then you see how we actually put edge in all LED lights across the base of the, the length of that funnel. Um, we have the magic carpet of course. It's painted tangerine, um, and it has beautiful LED lights uh, running all around it. So there were a lot of things that we did to the exterior of the ship, including if you saw that T, the, the blue T that matches the paint of the, of the hull up and across the, the front of the ship as well. And we really wanted it not only to be fuel efficient, but also to be very recognizable. Brian, I have a question for you to your left in the upper section. There we go. Hi, I'm Susie from SusieCruzy.com, and I have a question about dining reservations. So, if you've got four main dining rooms with different themes, and each one has special dishes, if you have traditional dining and you get assigned to Normandy, do you then do you lose the opportunity to try the special dishes in the other restaurants? So, um, hopefully, everyone's checking out the restaurants and. Cornelius Gallagher here and the culinary team has done a great job um, putting together really innovative menus. So thank you, Cornelius. Hopefully everyone likes the food. Um, so I think what we're trying to do with the dining experience is to give the best of both worlds um, on edge. So if you want traditional dining, like we have today across the fleet, we offer that. 
you can do early or late, and we will assign you a restaurant, and you have the same table at the same restaurant, the same waiter, same time, just as we do today. Or you can pick select dining, and you can make a reservation in any of the four restaurants at any time, depending on the night that you're cruising. If you're in traditional, and you're, you are assigned uh, Normandy, and three days into the cruise, you say, hey, I want to go check out Cyprus, our team will make that happen. So that is always the case. We have more availability and more seating in our main dining room here than anywhere across the fleet, so there's a lot of flexibility that we give our guests to make sure that we can accommodate their requests. The other great thing is that in our men all four restaurants, the majority of the menu is the same in all four, and it's really the best of what we do today across the fleet. We learned that our, our guests today love our food in our main dining room, so we wanted to keep providing that. And in addition, also the feature selections in each of the four restaurants that kind of represent the concept of that restaurant. Thank you, and I have another question. I know we can't reserve magic carpet dining on the edge until you're on the ship. Is Le Petit, Le Petit Chef something you can do in advance, like the steakhouse, or? Yes, okay. yes. thank you. So, and we have two seatings for Le Petit Chef at six o'clock, six o'clock and 8.30, and you could reserve that through PCP before you cruise. We have another question right over here. Hi, uh, my name's Anthony. Congratulations on all your success. I have really two questions for you. One, um, as a female leader of a major company in America, how do you see that role being very special and how do you take that responsibility on and set a great example for other women wanting to move up corporate ranks in America? Two, I'm just curious, there's so many amenities on this ship and I can't imagine the cost of building a ship like this. How do you sort of look at creating an incredible experience for your guests but also driving the bottom line? You have to do that for Wall Street. And what things are sort of coming in the future and cruising that can generate more revenue to make your company more successful so you can continue to be innovative and create incredible experiences for uh, cruisers in the future? Wow. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, and just this, and I just love Anthony Shriver, is the CEO of Best Buddies. Um, I am on the International Board of Best Buddies, and um, Buddies are wonderful, amazing. We have quite a, a few on board with us, and um, thank you for all you do uh, for the world, making it a better place and, hand, and helping um, so many with special abilities live a productive and wonderful life and not be marginalized by society. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for you. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, let's see, I, I'm going to try to take them in order and let me start with um, the question about being a woman leader. Thank you very much. I am uh, very fortunate to have the role that I do. I know I worked really hard for it. I know I earned it. Um, but it's still wonderful. A lot of people work hard and earn certain things that they might not ever get. So I wake up grateful every day and I also try to use the opportunity um, to help others and create a very diverse and inclusive environment within, uh, within our company and um, try to do that at whatever opportunity that I get uh, for any place I show up. How we do, uh, what we do here at Celebrity, I feel very fortunate that I get to work with an amazing team of people every day that helps um, people feel welcome, no matter uh, where they are from, or what their religious beliefs are, or what their sexual orientation is. And I also try very hard to improve the gender balance in some parts of our business where gender balance has been very disproportionate for as long as the, as the cruise industry has um, been in existence, and that's mostly on the operational side of our business. But we've just hired our third woman captain. Yeah. Uh, we, um, we have on this ship 30% of our crew are women. Um, every other uh, ship is normally about 17, maybe 20 at the most. 37% of our guest facing crew are women. Unheard of and the highest percentage, I think, in the history of cruising, and I have a, a lot of people to be very grateful for to make that happen, including everybody um, that works on the operational side of the business and our human resources side of the business. And um, last but not least, Patrick, who uh, actually had to go back to the office and do a little bit of other work, which is why he couldn't be with us um, on this two-night cruise. Patrick uh, and his team have helped improve our gender balance on our bridges from 
to um, just north of 20% in just two years. And so um, that is, again, a huge accomplishment. And we have a lot of firsts, including Nicolene, who was on the bridge of this ship as a third officer, who is the first woman ever from the country, uh, the continent of Africa and the country of Ghana to ever be able to work on the bridge of a cruise ship. She was the first, and now we have four across our fleet. Um, so, in answer to the question about how do we then go out in the world and try to do this, getting um, Nicolene hired was a year-long uh, journey and process for us because Ghana was not recognized, the Ghana Maritime University or Academy was not recognized by the International Academy, um, nor by our flag state of Malta. So for one year, Patrick worked tirelessly to make that happen. And I will have to tell you, one of my proud days um, was seeing five women from the uh, Ghana Maritime University holding a celebrity flag with a big X in front of the sign, which was wonderful. And then just the last thing I'd like to mention is um, in talking about gender, gender diversity, gender balance, gender equality. It is a huge honor of our brand to have Malala Yousafzai as the godmother for Celebrity Edge. Her mission of educating young women who do not have access to safe and secure education, which we all take for granted, is heroic. Um, and uh, we are inspired by it. Um, and many of the women on our, uh, on our ships and the men, I, I can't tell you how many crew members especially, walk up to me and tell me how proud they are to work for a company that would have someone like Malala as, as their godmother. And um, for me, when our crew is proud and happy to work here, that, uh, that just uh, gives me a tremendous amount of joy. Um, in terms of the things that we do uh, um, and the investment that we make on these ships and then how we think about the brand and how we move it forward and how we improve shareholder value, um, you know, the way I believe that we improve shareholder value is to improve the value of what our brand represents, not only to consumers and thinking about cruising in a different way and to stop saying cruising is not for me and actually raise their hand to cruise around the world. I always wonder why people are so reluctant to travel in a way that I believe is the most magical way in the world to travel, which is by sea. That's how the world was discovered, right? By sea. Who wouldn't want to take a cruise? everyone. So uh, we keep trying to uh, move uh, the industry forward, move the brand forward, uh, create more of a modern luxury experience so more people will uh, opt in in terms of the demographic uh, that we are going for. We ensure that our experience is worth paying for we are, so that every, all of us make more money and that's really uh, what celebrity is all about. And as we, we scan the universe for what consumers want to do and where people want to go, we don't just, we actually I never want to look sideways. I never want to look behind me. It's just a personal thing that I have. I'm always looking forward, and the team that I work with is so terrific because we're all always looking forward to see who do we want to be, who do we want to attract, what do we want our cruises to be worth, um, and, um, and how can you sell them better. And so that's why we keep pushing ourselves forward so that we can all grow this industry and return the shareholder value um, and ensure that the confidence <laughs> that the board of directors uh, gives and puts in us by investing in these ships pays off uh, for all of us. I want to thank you very much for allowing us this opportunity. Yes. And also, thank you for giving us such a wonderful story to go out there and tell those people that say cruising is not for me, because now we've got an additional story to tell them. But my question is for every single one of you on the panel, because we're only on here for two days. I'd like to know, from each and every one of you, what is that one place or one thing that each one of us have to see or do before we get off this ship to make sure that when we get back in our desk and we're selling this ship and this line that we have the right story to tell. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually not going to answer that question. I'm going to let uh, my colleagues up here answer. It's a great question. Um, the cheating answer would be to say you have to do it all, but that's, that's not fair at all. I think you have to come to one of the shows in the theater. There, 
they're just remarkable. Like the level of talent and the um, the amazing job that Becky Thompson Foley has done. Yes, no. more applause for Becky, please. <laughs> Just imagine that Becky works at Cruise Planners, and then... <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> well, those shows are awesome. I think that, um, as, as LP was saying, you know, there's this idea that cruising's not for me, and there are these sort of barriers that people have, and as the CMO, I'm always thinking about those. How do we attack those barriers? Um, and I think the assumptions around entertainment can be a big barrier, but you know, you experience five minutes of the level of talent that we have on this ship in terms of entertainment, and it's remarkable. It's absolutely world class. Um, so I think the shows are just amazing. They're they're fresh, epic, and emotional, really good. Um, I would also say you need to check out Eden after ten o'clock. It's unbelievable. I really don't know how to describe it, and I get paid to describe this stuff, so that's a problem. I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> So I agree with everything Peter just said. <laughs> but um, I think a few things we, we did today try to um, create some experiences throughout the day to give you a taste of edge. Um, and you can sample different things. So today from 12 to 2, we have every restaurant open for you to go visit, eat, and drink your way through Celebrity Edge uh, from 12 to 2. There's, there are pop-up entertainment uh, going on in the Grand Plaza and in Eden, so you can look and try to experience the entertainment. But personally, one of the things I love to do, and I've been on this ship for many, many weeks, is, um, yeah, <laughs> laughing. No, he has. I don't even know how many weeks anymore. Um, is every morning I try to go running on the jogging track outside on the resort deck, and it's really amazing to see the outer decks, because you get to see the rooftop garden, the pool, the resort deck, the retreat, and the jogging track is, is designed to be asymmetrical. And the viewpoints you get to see as you're walking around or jogging around the ship is really incredible and stunning, and it's a great perspective of the ship just to walk around the outer deck. So I do encourage you to do that. So I absolutely agree with both of these guys, but um, from a selling perspective, I would say for me, for you, is that I would want you to tell the retreat story because uh, you know the suites represent 12% of our entire ship. But if you look at the amount of space and the exquisite things that go on in the retreat, I think that you will know that you need to make sure that you sell your customers the retreat experience that goes from the Sky Suite all the way up to the Iconic Suite. And the retreat is included, ladies and gentlemen, for every single one of those suites. So not only do you have Luminae, but then you have the retreat lounge, then you have the retreat sun deck. And if you have not seen them, you must go and experience them. Because in the sun deck, you have your own swimming pool, your own hot tub, the, your own bar, and it literally is this like magical place. And then when you leave the retreat, it's just as beautiful. So the story that I want you to be able to tell is that we are worth it. Don't worry about the price. We're worth it. Sell them a Sky Suite all the way up to the Iconic Suite. We're worth it. Like L'Oreal. We're worth it. Just like L'Oreal. Based on uh, the suggestions, uh, and um, I have a couple of options for you. <laughs> If it is only two days that you are staying here, I suggest you eliminate sleeping. Because <laughs> there is so much that you can see on this ship that these two days are not enough. Second option, which I think is better, is come back. <laughs> Yeah, we might give him a job in sales. Come back. I could do that. <laughs> I know you can. I was born for that. Not Chandra's job. Or kids or anyone. We will work uh, side one. by there side. That's side why side. I sat here. <laughs> so, obviously, I have many favorite spots. 
here on this ship. I can't uh, say out loud that my favorite spot is the bridge because I'm going to, to create a problem to Captain Costas <laughs> because not everyone can go there. But uh, I love the magic carpet. I love, uh, I'm a sailor. I love when it goes down and I jump on the tender and I just starting uh, swinging around and it's the best tender, the best launch in the world. It's like a little yacht. So this is uh, one of the 200 experiences I like on this ship. I highly suggest that uh, you come and bring all your friends here for another uh, five cruises, real cruises. I, I love this ship. It's, uh, I've been obviously uh, 25 years on ships and this is something really unique. In my opinion, this is a turning point for the cruising industry, not for this company only. I want to thank uh, my colleagues and of course Lisa, our uh, leader, for uh, uh, driving us to this point. Uh, as I said, this is unique. It's not just one place I can suggest. Thank you. ladies anyway um, my question is about the infinite veranda rooms which I do love I think they're spectacular totally new but we've already noticed that there's somebody who has the ability to lock that window on you uh, probably the captain probably somebody important which is all fine I just think there should be a letter in the stateroom that discloses that so when we have clients coming on we're like calling your guests relations every five minutes, wondering why their window won't go down. It won't drive you guys crazy. I just think there should be a disclaimer in the room saying, at times on this sailing, the windows may be Good shut idea. due to whatever, so people don't call your guest services every five minutes. That's a really good point. Thank you very much. And we do, um, it is the captain uh, who pushes that. <laughs> right here, Costas. <laughs> Uh, but no, thank you very much. And uh, it was a little rocky too when we left yesterday. And usually under those circumstances, uh, for everyone's safety, we do um, we do control them. And the rain, rain showers as well. Um, so we will definitely disclose that. Thank you. That's a very good idea. We will put it in the celebrity today so that everybody knows that. Thank you. So Lisa, up on deck five, we have another question. I see you. Yes. Uh, we do have one down here after after that. Yes. Hi, uh, Jeff Cohen from Toronto. But everybody, hold your applause. Peter <laughs> <laughs> oh, will applaud that. He's a he's a fellow Torontoian. Is that right? <laughs> Torontonian. There you go. Uh, a couple of observations. First of all, we're gobsmacked by this by this ship. It's incredible. Every every what? corner of it is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, second of all, your staff. It, I don't know how many hours you put them in training for smiling, but from the minute we're awake to the minute we go to bed, which we don't really do. I know, um, it's a long day. What an incredible team. The pool butlers, I mean, the people cleaning, they're just awesome. So my question, I think, is marketing and sales. I'm not really sure. There's a whole lot of incredible technology on the ship. Um, we're being guided by our smartphones. Some of us don't really know how to use our smartphones very well. Is there a strategic move on your part to shift the demographic a little bit? I mean, personally, I'll sell celebrity from anybody 9 to 90 because there's something for everybody in celebrity. But with all the new technology and the interactive <coughs> themes, and are we trying to move a little bit towards millennials, next gens? Is that part of your strategy? Um, yeah, I think maybe Dr. Peter and I could all so take it. Whoever wants to start, go ahead. You want to start or me? You go ahead. Okay. So polite. So, um, no, Jeff, it's a terrific question. And, you know, we, we've gotten that a couple of times because the ship is so cool. People are saying they're using the word it's so cool, right? 
Um, and interestingly enough, we are looking for people who really want the finer things in life who really want to experience something unique. And I love what you said about 9 to 90, because the reality of it is, is that this ship is going to be for those people, and honestly, this ship's gonna not be for some of those people. And we want to deliver on modern luxury and opening up the world with this ship in the most innovative and creative way. Multi-generational travel is the perfect spot because on this ship, grandmother, mother, daughter, and granddaughter, and all of their family members will be really wonderfully happy. And some ships may have kids be really happy, and some ships may have grandmother be really happy, but what we're looking for here is those people who really wanna celebrate life or celebrate something special. You know, we're really doing a lot for people in their anniversaries and their birthdays and those types of things. So Jeff, it's not, a younger person. It is the person who you know that you've got that would truly, truly appreciate what we're delivering on every single day. I want to open by saying the Toronto Raptors beat the Golden State Warriors last night in the NBA. I think they're the next NBA champs. That's just my opinion. It's a good game. Um, yeah, so that's a great question. I, I, I think. So there can be this tendency to assume that because we're introducing things like technology or certain dining concepts that we're making a, a charge to sort of a different, um, a different generation. And one of the things that we, that we, one of the rules we have in the marketing department is never to underestimate our guests. We don't want to underestimate um, who they are and what they're in tune with <laughs> and their connection with technology. So we really don't think about um, Millennials or Gen X or boomers. We think about people who are contemporary and engaged um, and want to see the world in a really unique way and who um, Who enjoy what we're doing here? I think that what's on this ship is It's pushing the way that it's pushing cruising forward. It's um, and, and that's what's important to, to me in terms of the communication and how we address folks, but you know, I was on last week, fortunate enough to be on with my five-year-old son and my 70-year-old dad. They both had an exceptional time. You cannot get my dad off of his iPad. He knows everything about like all the apps and like what, I don't even know what he's doing on there. He's retired. It's like, what is he even doing? But I actually don't want to know. You don't want to know. Yeah, like I don't want to know. It's like, just clear your browsing history, dad. <laughs> But I, you know, I think that the, what's important to me too about technology is that it should be kind of invisible, which is one of the things I love about what the Excalibur team and Tim here have done with the tech, is that it, the ship is gorgeous and functional without it. Uh, it doesn't get in the way. It's not as if you, know, you walk into the room and there's sort of an iPad on the nightstand and it does a couple of things that you never really use. It's just on the device that I already have. It's really seamless, and if you want to engage with it, it's great. If you don't, the ship is still exceptional. Um, so we just think that this is a ship for everybody, uh, rather than really thinking about a different demographic necessarily. We have a question. So either one, but let's make sure we, we get to Bonnie. Excuse me, Lisa, are you fine with two more questions? Can I, can I, for one second, go back to the gentleman and thank him for starting with uh, our crew here, yeah. because yes, technology is big and everything is big, but the most important thing mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. gives the life and the soul of this ship yeah. is always crew. our 1,400 very hardworking crew members. Yeah. And I want to say something else. We do not train them to smiling. <laughs> it's genuine. Yeah. They love this ship. They love this brand so much. This is their home, and they take care of their home and the guests that they're coming on. They feel that, and I know that, and you can sense that. It's genuine, and uh, I cannot give enough credit to all of these people that worked uh, uh, so hard to experience uh, uh, what you experience. Thank you. 
Excuse me, Lisa Martin, on your left hand side here, Lisa Martin over here. Just want to ask you, uh, do we have time for two, maybe three yes. more questions? I yes, know you are very busy. There's one here, and yep. there's one oh, here, and then one we can. Uh, 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 what? 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 Hold on. Four more, that's it, though, guys. But you know what? We're on the ship all day, and none of you are shy, so if we don't get to your question in this big room, you will find us. We don't hide. Um, so, uh, so you can find us if you have other questions or comments, any of us or all of us. Okay. So I start here. Yes. My name is Kathy Dura. I'm with Cruise Planners. <laughs> and I just have to say, let's talk about that app. It is fantastic <laughs> to be able to roll over on my bed <laughs> and just click a button and open that line this morning was magical. I mean, it was the best thing ever. Um, and being able to open your door, not having to you know, look for your, you know, your, your key card, I mean, it, it's fantastic. The other thing, I always travel with a nightlight because I am, when I get up in the middle of the night, I don't know where I am. And you guys have this fabulous, like, lighting in the bottom of the, of, of the uh, bathroom. It is fantastic. Now, one question I do have, um, the blind, obviously, it's on the outer wall, or, you know. Um, I'm concerned with people who may um, have be night owls and early birds being together, because once you open that blind, then all the light comes in, and the person who's sleeping is not, you know, going to be too happy with you. Is there any plans to put maybe curtains um, in, in the inner wall, you know, the one that folds open? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, there isn't. And, you know, we talked a lot about it. We debated it. Um, uh, the thing is, we wanted to keep those rooms as open as possible. And um, so we opted for the blackout shade. And, uh, and that was the one, um, the one that, we, that we ended up cho choosing in the suites. They do have both in the infinite verandas. It's, it's just blackout. Um, but I want to just go back to Michelle's question for a second because I didn't answer it. But since you said that, um, I was going to and let it go, but just before we get to the next question, the thing for me about this ship that is really special, because it's really hard for me to pick one thing, and every time I'm interviewed someone asks me to, is the attention to detail. And um, no matter where you look, the things for me that are special, check out every staircase. It's a work of art and a sculpture. Look up at every ceiling. It's a work of art. Um, one of the, I was walking through the ship one day and I bumped into one of the people that was an art consultant who uh, curated part of our collection. That's another amazing thing on the ship. And she said, you know, you don't need a, a big art collection, even though we have one. Um, she said, the ship is a work of art. Mm -hmm. And I think I would say that that is what's very special, no matter where you look. And one of the things that was special to me about every designer that worked with us is this wasn't just a job an assignment that they got paid for, which it was, but all of their hearts, and you can tell by that video, are in this ship and you can tell everywhere you look and everywhere you turn. Um, so for me, that's what's very special. And for you to notice the nightlight, uh, which is a, a small detail that some may not notice, it's just all of those little things that we really tried um, to make sure that we accomplished when we were building this ship. Um, Bonnie, right here, for you, please. My name is Bonnie, and I have to say, this is our first time in Celebrity. We love it. Oh, thank you. And we love thank the you. retreat. I cannot express how wonderful it is and detail-oriented. But we also tried the gym, which is absolutely fabulous. There's enough machines for everybody. We tried the spa, incredible. And all the details, including the robes, the towels, everything that was offered to us was first class. We want to thank you, Lisa. You did an incredible job. Thank you. And we are. <laughs> we are. That's right. About the art because I am in the arts. I'm an art consultant and we're collectors of contemporary art. <coughs> the art on the ship is beyond. And I want to tell you that anybody that comes on this ship will have the greatest experience looking at the photography, the sculpture, everything that was done is first class. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. On deck five. Deck five, and then we have this gentleman here, Cord, please, right here. After the deck five, yes. Right okay, got it, got it, I see you, sorry. I'm blinded by the light. Blinded. <laughs> Thank you, my name is Olga Ramuro with Express Travel, Miami, Florida. 
I'm also part of the Commonwealth Institute, uh, recognizing yes. uh, women-owned business. And thank you so much for your support, Lisa. You're always there on small uh, business for women-owned business. But I'm here as an ASCA board member, American Society of uh, Travel Advisors now, since we rebranded from American Society of Travel Agents to advisors, because that's what we do. We advise our customers on coming on ships like this. We're having our board meeting on this beautiful ship and you're so supportive of our efforts, and I guess I wanted to hear why do you think supporting us is important, and we thank you for it. Are you, and you're talking about travel, the travel agency community? Yes. Yes. Um, you know, I started in this business as a travel advisor. We called, us, we called ourselves agents at the time. Um, I spent 17 of my 34 years in sales working with travel advisors all over the country, all over the world. Um, we have a deep, deep respect and appreciation for everything that you do to support us, and we will never waver in our reciprocal support for you. I can tell you that ASCA will continue to support you because of how much you support us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, hi. So hi, I'm Lou Edwards, and sorry to say I'm not a member of Cruise Planners. Wait, wait, wait. Diversity and inclusion. We Thank love, you. We love everybody. Equal, equal means equal. Oh there my you goodness. Go. So, there you wow, go. so I'm on, I'm on the edge. There I'm on the edge of glory. Hey. I'm on the edge with you. I love it. Okay, so I own a company called special events at sea. Uh -huh. uh, we do group events, seminars, and other special events from 50 to 500. So probably my question is better aimed at Dondra. Uh, I came on this ship, and grateful to be invited, uh, to scout meeting space for some upcoming groups. Uh, my question to Dondra, as we do many of these groups on other, say, on other ships, we have not done a large group event on Celebrity yet. Ooh. Why not start at the top? Mm. Why not start at the top? So why? Should I invite my next seminar, B2B, or mm -hmm. consumer group of, of 50 to 500 on the edge instead of any other ship? What can we do for groups? Oh, that's a perfect question for Dondra. Oh, let, her, let her rip. Okay, we got all day. Here we go. <laughs> I owe you. Um, first of all, the ship is spectacular. Second of all, this ship actually has more space for groups than any other ship that we have. And what I love about it is that it doesn't feel like that. But the destination gateway is a beautiful place. We have the meeting place. We have four main dining restaurants. We have specialty restaurants. We have this room. We have so many places. And a shout out to Lisa Vogt and her team because she actually helped us from a group's perspective. We had the MICE Charter and Incentive Team help us create this ship, and a lot of them are here today, to make sure that not only would we deliver on the individual experiences that everybody will get, but then as a group, we will be able to deliver on you know meeting space and incentive spaces and places you can dine and have a meeting, and things that I know that are really important to uh, whether it be small, medium, or large size groups. So I give you my word, first of all, no more groups anywhere else, okay? Second of all, when you do, not only will we deliver beautifully on groups for EDGE, but honestly, whether it be Millennium Class, Solstice Class ships, we can deliver on groups, and we get so many awards for groups because we combine the things you need for groups with the modern luxury experience that's culinary and all the other things that you get combined. And I very, very humbly believe nobody does it better. I really believe it. Thank you, Thank you very much. Got to go check out the meeting now, place. Let's go talk okay. afterwards. Let's go no, talk no, afterwards. listen, the meeting place is our press room right now, which is why we couldn't dress it up like a meeting space and show it off to you. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Before we close, I want to make sure you all know Captain Costas. Captain, stand up yeah. and take a bow. And our chief engineer Stavros. Um, 
And then uh, we really do need to close. We've gone a little over, but this has been such a, a wonderful time <coughs> with all of you. And um, I just want to close on behalf of all of us at Celebrity, um, including the crew and leadership of Celebrity Edge. We want to thank you so much for spending your really valuable time with us over these uh, couple of days. Uh, we have been waiting for a long time for the ship. Um, we have worked really hard to um, design every experience and um, so many people in this room are responsible for that. I echo Manolis's comment that our crew is extraordinary on this ship. It gives me a tremendous amount of energy actually, not only joy, but energy to walk through this ship and see all of them loving their ship and taking such good care of each other and you every single day. So thank you for that, the huge applause that you give and as you see them, uh, please acknowledge that. Um, they just are delightful and wonderful. Um, and lastly, thank you for your unwavering support of Celebrity. I know so many of you um, in this room either write about us um, or sell us every single day. And some of you are just amazing members of the community that uh, it's an honor to sail with and we appreciate your support as well. Um, we can't do any of this uh, without all of you, um, including our board. If, if our board didn't believe in us, we couldn't do this either. So my heartfelt congratulations to all of you. We're letting you out of here now so you can experience all of Cornelius's wonderful menus and this great ship because to Michelle's point, you have so very little time. So thank you for spending it here with us.